unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Romans 8.28 <laughs> And we know! We don't pray. We don't hope. We don't assume. We don't suppose. We don't presuppose. We don't guess. It's not rumor. It's not gossip. It's not conjecture. It is the truth. The Bible says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> say hallelujah again. I love Romans 8. I love Romans 8. You know, when we were growing up many years ago, and I believe many of you can attest to what I'm going to say here, there is a lot of false humility. Huh? I have seen in the Christ kingdom, in many, many circles of Christianity, and people call it humility. They call it uh, piety, they call it, they feel it's pious, they feel it's godly fear, they feel it's humility, it's brokenness, it's the true understanding of breaking before God. It's in our services and sermons, it's in our songs. Huh? Today I was somewhere, and uh, this guy was playing gospel, a gospel song. And a gospel song I believe many of us uh, used to sing. Eh? And you know that song called The Heart of Worship? Huh? So, there's a line in there in the song that says, King of endless world. Do you remember that? No one could express how much you desire. Eh? But there's a part where it says, Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours. Every I said, yeah, 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 yeah. The guy thinks that by saying that he's weak and poor, it's humble before God. It's so I'm weak and poor. All I have is yours. Don't you think God loves poverty? <laughs> so you're giving God poverty and weakness. <laughs> Listen. This is the generation that can't sing those songs. We are not weak, we are not poor. We are strong and we are rich. It's not wrong to say, though I'm rich and strong, all I have is yours. You understand what I'm saying? I'm a steward and I'm conscious of that. But why should I be weak and poor? That's a confession with your mouth. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Somebody's killing themselves by a confession. And because music has a way of Taking you there quicker. Some of you die. Because it ministers you out of the conviction that you need. If it was a statement spoken, the red lights would have come on. But because it came in a song and, it, and, and, and it's like... Some people confuse a very nice rhythm eh, and percussion with revelation and depth. Huh? It's like I remember those days in, in campus. We used to sing, I have met you too small. In my life, then oh, then you feel it like you've really met God small. You understand what I'm saying? And, and sometimes you did not make, make make him small. It's just that the, the song came. You understand? And, and some guy has been making God so small, and then for you, you've been magnifying, exalting, doing everything right, speaking right. God, you're awesome. You're good. And then this guy just brings a song along the way, and you say, ah, okay, yeah, uh, maybe I made you small. I have made you. To, you understand? And I have believed in a lie. 
that you were unable to help me. Then somebody believes that it's going to be on his butt now. Oh, 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 oh. Do you understand? And then the next time again they sing it. Meaning that they're making the same mistake over and over. They make him small. Then they believe in the lie that God can't save them. Then somehow they believe him in a song. Then they magnify him like he's small. Be magnified. You understand? You see? And then after that again, tomorrow, they sing the song the next week. That's why Christianity. Oh God. Thank God for knowledge. Tell, Tell your neighbor, thank God for knowledge. Thank God for knowing who we are. Hallelujah. So of course, in that understanding... There are sermons we heard, you and I heard. And they were, they were represented as gospel truth. You know in this world, not everything that will come your way will come out straight. Things will go wrong. You see, and you see, I don't know whether some of you understand what I'm saying. There is a way I switch off when I start to hear people. Does that mean we've not gone through stuff? Brother, we have gone through stuff. But none of those things can be compared to the overwhelming joy unspeakable, full of glory, peace that passes all understanding, that revelation and love. He has been so good. Somebody say amen. Tell your neighbor, God has been so good. And I don't need to feel it. I don't need to feel it. Some people move by what they feel. Because they feel it's not working, therefore it's not working. Because they feel things are not happening, they, therefore they think it's not happening. One time somebody came to me, Apostle, I have prayed for so many years about this, and this issue has failed to go and ask her, who told you it has failed? No, every evidence around it proves that it, 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 it is not working. And I ask her, okay, which evidence are we talking about here? Are we talking about the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen? Oh, we're talking about physical evidence. I'm saying, ah, I'm talking about physical. I, I, there are things I'm seeing and everything is just going haywire. I tell them, look, you're observing lying vanities. You are observing lying vanities. And the Bible says, they that observe lying vanities, they forsake their own source of mercy and loving kindness. God wants to love you, but you're observing lovi- I mean what? lying vanities. God wants to pour his love on you. He wants to fill you. He wants to anoint. He wants to... to, to, to I want to get Sometimes I look for a, Okay, he wants to recobo ziba kando stele by it. Because some, some words can't articulate just how much God wants to reach out to bless us. But we observe lying vanities and forsake our own mercy. We forsake the source where we're supposed to be receiving mercy and loving kindness. Hallelujah. God just doesn't want to bless you. He wants to bless you until you're so overridden and overcome with it that you don't know what to do. I told people our counseling sessions have to change. Every time people put counseling, they go to the pastor, you know, pastor, my job. No, we want to get to a point where somebody has an apostle. Eh? I have a lot of money. I'm worried. So that we start counseling from there. Are you hearing me? Do you understand what I'm saying? I want people to come in my office saying, God, is it normal? I've, I've not fallen sick for the last 20 years, Apostle. Cancel me. Maybe I have a problem. It's, no, you don't have a problem. That is what we're supposed to be. Somebody shout hallelujah. Even what you're going through right now, it's working for your good. Because you love him. And you're called according to his purpose. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says for all things are for your sakes. Do you know what it means? Do do you know what, what it means for the Bible says that all things are. All things are for your sake. He says for all things are for your sake. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Give me amplified of that. He says for all things amplified. All these things are taking place. Wow! For your sake. So that what? More curses? More generational curses? More poverty? More sickness? More turmoil, more distress, more disease. No. He says so that more grace, divine favor and spiritual blessing 
extends to more and more people and multiplies through the many, the more thanksgiving may increase and redound to the glory of God. Why is it that everything working for your sake extends and multiplies glory to more people? Because God is saying, you're in the center of things and something must work out for good. I wish you got that. I just wish you got that. When the Bible says that it, 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 God wants to extend more and more grace to people and multiply even that grace through them to many more. Why? Because as people observe stuff on your life, are you hearing me? As people observe what you're going through and then you come out of it. It's enough for somebody to say that that man's God is alive. That woman's God is alive. That brother's God is alive. And every other way. Are you hearing me? He says, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Always. Even the next challenge, you've beaten it already. Why? Because there's a present continuous experience of always causes us to triumph. The Bible says, and make it manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. God wants to put you up on a pedestal like, like, a, like, like a trophy. Are you hearing me? You see, God loves boasting over your success. He loves. You remember the time he was with say, Satan? told him, have you considered Apostle Grace? You understand? Have you co- okay, you can put your name. It's optional. He says, have you considered my servant job? Have you considered... He's deep, he's wise, he's annoying. You see, he, God loves, he loves to, he just loves to boast over you. The Bible says he boasts over us with singing, isn't it? God sometimes sings over you. He says, oh my wonderful apostle, my apostle. <laughs> he boasts over you with singing. He sings over you. Are you hearing me? Do you know what it means for him to compose a song about your success? Some of you are you understanding here. No. Let it sink in your spirit. That God boasts over your success. Even with singing. He's happy that you're well. He's happy that everything is working for you. He knows that certain things are not already working as they ought to. But that didn't shake heaven. It didn't make him lose peace and appetite. Because we know your end. We know your end. We know your end. The Bible says, brethren, we can consider the suffering of our brother who? Job. The Bible says, and he says, and we have seen the end of the Lord. Whatever you're going through has God's end on it. Everything you're going through at the end of the day, will say, God. They only need to explain. No. He says, Behold, we count them happy which endure. For you have heard of the patience of Job. And have seen the end of Job. Uh -uh. He says, I've seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful and tender of mercy. Whatever you're going through, your end people will say, God, choose to believe this. Tell your neighbor, just choose to believe it. You don't need an explanation. Choose to believe that your end is of the Lord. I don't know what you've gone through. I don't know what has refused. I don't know how far you've tried it and it failed. Choose to believe that your end is of the Lord and it is good. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is why when you understand these things, you don't lose sleep over what's not working. Because that's unbelief. That's unbelief. That short circuits the power of God to operate on your life. You frustrate the source with which you receive loving kindness and deliverance. Do you know every minute you start thinking, it's not working, it's failing. Every minute you are conjuring a creative force to make it possible. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Not so does he become. No, present tense. When you start thinking, oh, things exactly, you, you are exactly what you're thinking immediately. You are exactly what you're meditating that immediate moment. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. I wish you understand this. That your thought life is a creative process. It's a creative process. Every time you silent and smirk and then get so sad about things that are not working, you are it. When you think that you're poor, even if you have a million dollars on the account, at that particular point you're poor. 
the spirit world starts contributing to that to make sure that it, 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 it happens. The unseen world starts to hasten the manifestation of what is in your spirit. So is when a man starts to believe that they are blessed of the Lord, that they are graced of the Lord. You know, it's like I've been dealing with a few preachers who think that everybody who preaches prosperity is indifferent to God's revelation. No. No, no, no. Don't be mistaken. We love God probably more than you. Where our hearts, you'll know that we love God. But you see, God has not intended that men be poor. He has not intended that men suffer. Do you understand what I'm saying? Somebody, oh, bro, there's a prosperity preachers. There's a prosperity preachers. There's a prosperity preachers. The prosperity is... And you're like, what do you mean by prosperity preachers? He says that my word shall not go back void. The Bible says when I send it, he says it shall accomplish that which I send it to do. And it shall prosper in the thing that I send it. What are you meaning? Prosperity is a result of a man who received the word of God in his heart. That's what the Bible says. He said it shall prosper in the thing where unto I sent it. When the word comes in your spirit, you must be prosperous. Come on, somebody. We were not called to be, to be poor. We were not called to be beggarly. We were not called to be survivors. Ah! We are super Zionistic first world citizens living in Uganda. We are not citizens of that world country. Uh-uh. We are first class super Zionistic citizens of heaven living this part of the world. This is as simple. He found a, a Christian with a, 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 a silly, silly means unserious conversation. Saying, ah, you know we are in the third world. We are, you and who? <laughs> you are, you say for yourself. I ain't in the third world, hallelujah. This is, I'm just here to help this third world country get somewhere. But I'm not third world. Tell your neighbor I'm not third world. I, I, I'm not even first world. I'm super Zionistic. Hallelujah. He says you are come unto Zion. The city of God. To the company of universal angels. To the spirits of just men made perfect. To Jesus the mediator of the new covenant. Whose blood speaketh better things than the blood of Cain and Abel. We are bigger. Way bigger than anything in this world. Somebody shout hallelujah. As you continue listening to these things, something is happening in your life. That's the beauty with the word. He says, it does not return to me void. It shall accomplish. It must prosper in the thing I send it. Now you're in trouble. The fact that you've heard me speaking these words, it shall prosper because he has sent it in you. Tell somebody I'm a success. And I'm not sorry. The more you hear these things, eh? The more you hear these things, the more they start manifesting in your life. The more you hear them in your spirit. The more you speak them every day. The more you confess them. The more you meditate on them. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. He says, you shall meditate there in day and night. That thou mayst observe to do. Somebody say, Amen. He says, then shall you have what? Suffering and turmoil. No. He says, then shall you have good success. And you shall make thy way prosperous. Prosperity is for you. You'll make your way prosperous. Think it, speak it. 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 Get bored with even speaking it. And the more bored you get speaking it, you speak it the more. Hallelujah. Until it, that's called spiritual warfare. Can you imagine for a second? He says, it shall not depart from your mouth. That's an instruction. Command, right? Meditate, that's a command. That thou made so start to do, that's not a command, that's a result. That means the more you speak and meditate, you do. Oh, you didn't get it. How do I make the lemon walk? Uh-uh. Start speaking and meditating it. 
you, do you know what I do every time I'm going for crusades? Oh, thank you, God. Because the lame are walking. The blind are seeing. Then I start playing movies eh, of crippled legs getting in order. I start playing movies of blind eyes seeing. I start playing movies of the deaf hearing. I start playing movies of dead men raising. I start playing movies of cancerous tumors leaving. And before you know that on crusade, people come. Oh, this one was this. The Lord healed her. Oh, this one was that. The Lord healed her. Why? Because why? You go in your spirit. You go in the physical. Somebody shout hallelujah. You don't stop speaking. Uh-uh. You don't stop meditating. And amazingly, according to the order of the spirit, men don't speak to meditate. No, men meditate to speak. That is why the secondary definition of meditation also borrows the word to matter. Out of the abundance. How robust are the So that's why the Bible says, for out of the abundance of the heart, so the mouth speaketh. When the word of God fills your spirit, what do you find yourself doing? You find yourself spitting and speaking it. Why do you think I'm preaching? Because I fill myself with the word. If I was filling myself with my talk, I'd be speaking food. You understand what I'm saying? You're, you're the total sum of what you fill yourself with. Somebody sound hallelujah. You eat the words, you feel it, you, you understand it. You read it. Man, me, I have Bibles almost everywhere in my house. No, it's, it's not, it's not. Ah. Even if you check my car right now, I have two of them. You might think, but what? No, because I want to check this one. I also want to check the other one. I want to check the electronic one and then compare with this one. I hear me. Everywhere I'm at, I want to be with the word. You understand? I don't know how to move without the word. I don't know how. Because there's these words are life. To them that find them and medicine to their bones. You can't fall sick when you're reading the Bible in any way. Oh, but my uncle used to read the Bible and then they fell sick. They read it the wrong way. They read it the wrong way. If you read the word of God, it will make you what it says. It shall prosper in you. Somebody say amen. Now, I have settled it in my heart. It's a very settled conviction. Unwavering. Infallible. That I don't take time to worry about anything that is not working. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I've set my life on the faith that all things work together for good. Because I love the Lord and I'm called according to his purpose. And I know it that I'm in the perfect will of God. I know it. Now... This is a common scripture, but it's going to become beautiful in a second. Now, in the next verse, God explains why. Why all things must work. He says, you see, the reason why everything must work for you, it is not what I'm going to do tomorrow. It's the foreknowledge I had about you and predestinated you. I, I fashioned and configured you. Give me the amplified of that. He says, for those whom he foreknew, of whom he was aware and loved. You whom he was aware of and loved. He's explaining why everything must work together for good. He says, he foreknew you. He knew you before you entered this world. He knew you before you started that job. He knew you before you entered that marriage. He knew you before you produced that mad child. He knew you before you... you, 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 you oh yeah, Reconda Costa. He knew you before you even drove that car. Oh, he knew you. He foreknew you beforehand. And he loved you. The verse says, he also destined from the beginning. He fashioned and configured you from the beginning for success. When God was making you, he made you for success. When God was making you, he made you for increase. He made you for multiplication. He made you for profit. He made you for wisdom. He made you for revelation. He made you. He made you for sanctification. He made you. He made you for holiness. He made you for purity. He made you. He made you. That means at the beginning of designing you, I believe God sounded like this in heaven. Of course, Moses says, let us make man in our own image and likeness. And he made he male and female, made he them. But this is how I think God spoke. He says, let us make men in our own image and likeness. And because we can't fail, they won't fail. Because we can't fall sick. <laughs> they won't fall sick. That's a bit of an exaggerated apostle. We, we die. You know, it depends on how you choose to die. You see, 
The Bible says, I give you life and death. Choose. Look at all our fathers of the faith. It's enough. Your servant can go. No, you have to make a choice when you're going to die. It has to be a choice. You have to say, you know what, you guys, I'm done. Going to heaven should be a choice. It must be a choice. It shouldn't be, ah, you know, you can be there and then God, no, no, no. Of course, there are people who God takes that way, but not me. I refuse that. In the mighty name of Jesus. God should not shock you in sleep. Uh -uh. No, no. No, 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 no. Joseph gave up his ghost. Jacob gave up his ghost. Jesus gave up his ghost. You understand? No, 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 no. Even at the cross, he knew that it was coming. It wasn't a shock to him. This shouldn't be untimely. No, 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 no. It has to be purposed. You must have finished. Somebody say that's my portion. I'm, I'm planning to live so long in the mighty name of Jesus. I refuse to die early. I refuse to die untimely deaths. I refuse to die unplanned deaths. That's not my portion. It will never be in the mighty name of Jesus. Say amen. And I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what is in your body. I don't care what's in your blood. No, he's the God of all flesh. The Bible says he's the God of all flesh. There's nothing so hard for him. He can fix your body. But you see, you must choose to live. The devil sends a little pain. Then you feel it. He's, oh my God, I think I'm going to die. You understand? Some people already conclude, I think, I think. So as a man thinketh, so he is. That means that you have activated the spirit of death on you. It's only a matter of time. It's going to manifest. Some people are already dead. They are walking Kampala Road, but they are dead. Grace is just delaying them. Choose to be full of life. Choose to live. He says, for us I live and not die to proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. He says, the man made a decision. He says, I shall live and not die. That means God, God knew that this man can make choice. He says, let's make man in our own image. To be a success, to be wisdom, to be wisdom, to be glory, to be everything. Let us fashion man. So, your, your success story is not what you're doing. It's not your works. It has nothing to do with what you've done and what you're going to do tomorrow. It has everything to do with the DNA, your configuration, your original setting. You understand what I'm saying? You can't set a clock to move clockwise, right? Huh? And then you start telling, stop moving clockwise. So it will just continue like that. Why? Because that's how it was set to be. Are you hearing me? Stop moving forward. That's why, you see, that's why when you understand that principle, you can't worry about the devil. How can you worry about the devil? Let him send everything he wants to. Let him bring it on like he wants. Let him send witchcraft. Let them send sorcery on you. The clock is moving where it was. Are you hearing me? They are attacking you. You understand what I'm saying? They're speaking evil about you. They're saying you're not going to be a success. Are you hearing me? Go get up against the Ma, so you're just going ahead. They're saying, no, you are this, you're wicked, and you're just continuing. Are you hearing me? They're not about, now that one, we give him next year. Are you hearing me? The clock continues and goes beyond next year, and then they still... Oh. The settings in me are for success. The settings in me are for a good end. The settings in me are for increase. The settings in me are for glory. Somebody say amen. So, he predestinates you. He designs and draws your destinies. Beginning for ordaining them to be molded into the image of his son. And share inward likeness. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says that he might become the firstborn among many brethren. He he has for he has made you to be like Christ inwardly. Inwardly. Inwardly that means in, in the unseen. Are you hearing me? Now the next verse says, He has now said it again, second time. And for those hey, whom he has thus foreordained, he also what? So what's the basis of your calling? Your settings. Your pre-configurations of nature. 
when he sees the successful man who must finish, he realizes, no, I can call this one. I can't make a mistake on somebody who will fail. Did, did you understand what I'm saying? I cannot make a mistake on somebody who will what? Who fail. But also, some people fail in their calling. They do not know who they are. They do not know who they are. They do not know who they are. They are calling and election is not sure. They do not know who they are. He says, for if you do these things, you will never fall. For so a door shall be ministered unto you into the everlasting kingdom. God will minister to you a certain realm that will keep you. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, that means, when he called me to be an apostle, he didn't configure me to fail Oh, you didn't understand me. When he called you to be a teacher, he didn't configure you to fail. When he called you into that parenthood, he did not call you to fail. When he called you into that marriage, he did not call you to fail. When he called you into that business, he did not call you to fail. When he called you in that career, he did not call you to fail. When, when he called you, he didn't configure you to fail. Your configuration preceded your call. That is why the Bible says that the callings and giftings of God are without repentance. Do you know why he doesn't repent? Because he has configured you. Oh! Somebody shout hallelujah. Your calling cannot fail. The gift on your life cannot fail. Why? Because he has pre-configured you. You were preset for success. You were preset for results. Hallelujah. You are preset for answers. You are preset for miracles. You are preset for signs. You are preset. You are preset. Then he said, you know what? Because I've known you and I've preset you this way. I've made you this way. Now I can call you. Because you will not fail. Hallelujah. And those whom he called... He also justified. Now, I love the first definition of justification in Amplified. He says he acquitted and made righteous, putting them into right standing with God. So, your righteousness is because of your calling, because of your presetting. Your righteousness has nothing to do with what you're doing. It has everything to do with a calling that came because of the preordination. Now, when the Bible speaks of preordained, the word there for ordination is anointed. You know, he gave you the necessary anointing. He gave you every anointing that you need to be set a certain way, to be called a certain way. And because of that, to be justified, acquitted and made right. I don't have regrets. Because I don't remember any. <laughs> I'm sure I did some, but I don't remember them. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says, He shall throw your sins as far. As the end of the earth. And he says, and he shall remember them no more. Now, if you were made in his likeness, that remember it's not. How do you remember? Oh, sorry. How do you remind? Because some of you don't remember, but you remind others. Ah, you remember in 1992 when you ate my at too? Yeah, no, no, no. Uh-uh. Hallelujah. So somebody asks, so do you have any regrets in life? No, I don't remember any. You mean you don't remember any? No, I don't remember any regrets. I don't have any. But you, have you been perfect? Yes, I am perfect. Are you sure you're perfect? Yes, I am perfect. No, I think this is foolishness. Yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. The Bible says the gospel is foolishness. It is foolishness. Being justified free. The Bible says, what do we have? We have peace toward God. You see, when you go to God, you don't say, oh, don't beat me. Can I come? Okay. No, 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 no. He says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
the message Bible says, listen, he says, by entering through faith into what God has already wanted to do, already, I love the way he says it, already, that means God, oh, says, God help me. No, he wants to help you more than you want to help you. That's why there's a place where the zeal of the Lord performs. There's a place where the zeal of God performs. Let me tell you, you can live a wonderful life if you choose to. You can choose a wonderful story and walk it. Now let's go back to, to what he says. He says, by entering through faith into what God has already wanted to do for us, set us right with him. Make us fit for him. You see, we have it all together with God. We have it all together. That means, when I go in the presence of God, eh, we don't have a bone to chew. You know, you know, some of us have been raised by parents, okay? So you know your father like at 2 p.m. during day. And then they tell you, let the visitors go. Hello, you're welcome. Good to see you. Come and greet the visitors. Come. This is my son, you understand? Eh? In your head you're like, visitor, don't go. <laughs> don't go. <laughs> Come on, don't, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. You understand what I'm saying now? We, we knew how to smile outside. Eh? You, they are going to beat you. So the one they are going to beat and the BT, they're all smiling in front of the hello, hello. And then somebody can even randomly say, I admire your family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and when you're a child, you're like, God, kill me right now. Oh, come and exchange this person's place. Let me take their place. You understand? I admire your family. Look at how happy. <laughs> <laughs> don't go you know that place where you pray for the visitor to stay but you don't know whether they're going to stay or go and then they stay and then you're like my capro zila bako stele my redeemer liveth because you know <laughs> that the son should not go down on his wrath <laughs> so the next day it's another story like I wish people visit every time I screw up. <laughs> you, you have nothing with the Lord. When you go to God, you don't go to Him like, oh God, you know. No, 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 no. You go to Him boldly. Are you hearing me? He says, come to the throne. He says, come boldly to the throne of anger. To the throne of wrath. No, he says, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain what? Anger, no. Mercy and grace to help in time of need. He did not invite you to the throne of anger and wrath. He invited you to the throne of grace. So every time you go to the praise of God, you have nothing to remind each other about. Why? <laughs> because you are acquitted. Oh. You remember when they were teaching us about prayer many years ago? They gave us the acronym ACTS. You remember who remembers that? So they say, adoration. You begin by saying, oh God, you're wonderful. Then you adore him. Then after that, you start confessing. You now have killed him. I've done that. And then you thanksgive. Then you make supplications. Then they say, if you make supplications before confession, you're wasting time. And if you give thanksgiving before adoration, your eyes say, Kubroza Lamande. So I asked the man, so translate that in tongues for me. Because for me, when I enter the praise of God, are you hearing me? I want to enter like, Braka Satala, Sobrokota Lamande, Zupokota Ka, Sibraka Talama Kozika. Now, where, where is adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication? That is the Holy Ghost prays through me. Somebody said, hallelujah. No. Go to God bold. Then somebody has a demon on them. And they're like, oh my God, I can't rebuke a demon before confessing my faults. Wait a minute. Then the demon starts strangling the person and says, Father, first forgive me. I da, 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 da. Oh, now I feel holy. Now you demon in the name. No. No. No, no. Demons don't leave. No. Oh. Because you confess. No. Demons leave because of who you are. Your preset. Can I prove it? Galatians 3. He says, how does he give you the Holy Spirit? 
How does he does distribute his gifts? Does he distribute them to you by works or by faith? Give me the amplified of that. The amplified. He says, he who supplies you with the marvelous Holy Ghost and works powerfully and miraculously among you. Does he do so on the grounds of your doing what? Now, this is scripture. Does he do it by grounds of your doing what the Lord demands? Or because you believe in and adhere and trust and rely on the message you had? Somebody wakes up with a sickness, and they say, I deserve it. I sinned. Father, forgive me for my sin. Then after that, go, go. No! No! The moment you feel it, that very moment you feel it, you get your hand on your belly and say, Kapa, 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 Kapa. 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 If there's anything to deal with, I'll deal that with God. Not pain. No. If I'm falling, I fall before him, not before pain. Uh-uh. 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 If I'm standing, I'm standing before pain. And he's able to make me stand. Are you hearing me? When the pain comes, cast it out. After casting out, go and say, God, now how are up? If he must rebuke you over something, let him rebuke you over that thing. But he is not a chastiser of bodies. His spirit. He chastises in the spirit into conviction. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know this is contrary to what many of you know. Oh, he's sick because of this. You see, it was okay to claim that before the blood came. But you can't claim sickness over. There are people who have done worse and they're not sick. Come on, somebody. There are people who have done way worse and they're not sick. Babies die every day without anything. They are born with incurable diseases and they are buried every day. What have they done? So if, if, if it's not fair for a baby to die, why do you find it fair to be punished in a place where God has justified you? Hello? It's not fair for a baby to die, and I know that. Sin brought death, and we understand that. But we have been translated, the Bible says, from death into life. We have been translated from death. He has delivered you from the power of darkness. And to the, but, but even from death unto life. Now, you cannot, you cannot claim the life of men who walk in death. No. No. Whether you have issues, God will deal with those issues in you. But he, that shouldn't, you, you don't need to lose a tooth for God to get that stuff out of you. No. You don't need to. You don't need to. Okay, you do if you want. But me, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lose the truth because of that. Somebody say amen. Why? Because he knew me. He knew my ability. He knew what I could do and what I could not do. But he still called me. And justified me. Why me? Was there a chance of him thinking that he would fail with you? He was, he was not there. It was not in his head. Why are you putting it there? doctrines of men even as the doctrine of Christ traditions of men doctrines of devils representing themselves even as the doctrine of Christ somebody say I'm justified I'm acquitted I am made right before God now after that justification he glorified you your glorification is not a future experience Uh -uh. it is a finished work I'm a glorified being. Somebody say, I'm a glorified being. I'm a glorified being. I'm a glorified being. The glory of God is on me. The glory of God operates on me. The glory of God is in my eyes. It's in my body. It's in my every fiber of my beings. It's in my, it's in my business. It's in the ministry. It's everywhere. I, I told people, watch the speed Fanero is going to grow. I said, but how, how do you do it? He said, I'm glorified. I'm not believing God for glory. Uh-uh. I am glorified. He gave me his glory. 
in John 17. He says, my glory have I given. My glory have I given. He says, my glory have I given. My glory have given to them. My glory. He says, and the glory which thou give me, I have given them. I have given them. I carry the glory of Christ. Do you know how men felt when they were talking to Jesus? That's exactly how men feel when they meet me. Hallelujah. That's exactly how men feel when they come in my presence. That's exactly how men feel when they come next to me. That's exactly how men feel when they think about me. Why? Because the glory that was given him, he has given to me. Oh, the Bible says, oh, says, oh the Lord shall not share his glory with what? With another. Which covenant are we talking about? Which covenant are we talking about? And if you read that scripture in context, you realize he was talking to men. Mortal men. He wasn't talking about regenerated spirits. He wasn't talking about new creation. No, 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 no. He was talking about mortal men, carnal, fleshly. God didn't share his glory with carnal men because he knows their carnality will destroy. Are you hearing me? But not with you and I. You are justified. You are preordained and you are glorified. The glory on the Christ is the same glory on you. Imagine when you're stretching forth your hands to heal the sick. Glory. When you stretch forth your hands, oh, macabro sile mando si bakata la baye kosta. So I say, oh, I can imagine the glory around the Christ. I can imagine how much glory is around the Son of God. And I understand why they imagine it. Because it's beautiful to imagine it. But God wants you to go beyond imagining it. To be a possessor. To be a partaker of that nature. Hallelujah. Where the glory of God. You see, one time recently, somebody came in my office. And they had come for counseling. And they couldn't talk. Apostle, I don't know what's happening to me ever since I entered this office. I, 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 can't, I can't speak. What is here? I said, yeah, in my head. Of course, I was, like, I was humble here. But in the inside, I was like, look at glory. 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 How can, how can a guy... No way! The devil can defeat you. No. What is upon you should be enough. I said, what is upon you should be enough to withstand any attack on your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. That is why he wants you to understand his love. The Bible says that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. He says that you might be a body, holy field and flooded with God himself. It's possible. It's possible. God can fill you to a point where you are so full of him that you, you are full of God himself. And he says this, and to know practically through experience for yourself the love of Christ. Again, remember it's a love thing. It's a love thing. He says the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience and that you might be filled through all of your beings and to all the fullness of God and that you may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. The richest measure. Not the rich, not the richer. The richest. The richest measure of the glory and anointing of the Holy Ghost can fill your life. And then you start walking with it. You start living with it. You start eating with it. You can't stretch your hands with that thing and something and happen. You can't speak forth about the situation and that thing does not change. It's not possible. That means a man has been ordained for the richest measure. That's why I made up my mind long ago, I'm not going to settle for less. The richest measure, the richest measure of his divine presence is my portion in this life. You have to walk and men feel that this man is walking with God. You have to speak and people say, this woman is speaking with God. Everything of you oozing the presence, permeating the whole area with a... Come on! 
Because his glory he has given. Now, he foreknows you. He just predestines you, right? He calls you. He justifies you. He glorifies you. Now, when he gets to the end of all these things, he starts asking questions. Next verse. He starts asking questions. Now, the questions begin. He says, what shall we say then to all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be our foe? If God is, he starts asking, why are you worried? Why are you losing sleep? Why are you losing appetite? Why? 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 When Paul gets to the end of those things, he realizes, what, what else is left? What has the devil got on me? What, what has witchcraft got on me? What has hell got on you? What has the words of men got on you? What have those situations got on you? Listen, I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how bad it appears. The question is still here. Are you glorified? Are you justified? Were you called of God? Were you predestinated? He still asks if God is on our side. Who? 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 This is Paul literally looking. He's not just asking, but he's looking, asking. Who? He's trying to find who can, who can stand in the way of Fanero. Who can make me fail? Who can kill you? Who can stand in the way of your next contract? Who can stand in your ministry? Who can fail you? He doesn't see any. Because God is on your side. Somebody say, God is on my side. The questions continue. He who did not withhold or spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also, with him, freely and graciously, give us all things? He's asking. Because he's confused. With people who don't understand how powerful this is. Now he's trying to explain to what people have refused to believe it. He says, if he gave us Christ, won't he freely and graciously give you other things? He's asking unbelievers here who don't get it. The questions have begun. Continue. Who? Now, he's still asking. Oh, God! He's still asking. Who shall bring any charge against you? When it is God who justifies. That is who puts us in right relationship to himself. Who shall come forward and accuse or impeach those whom God has chosen? Will God who acquitted us? He's still asking. Because he didn't get it. Who will impeach you? Who will take you from your ministry? Is it God who justified you? And if it is not God who takes you out, again, he's on your side. So, who can still be against you? Because the only person who is able to fail you is on your side. The only person who can put a full stop on your life is on your side. Now he's asking... Who? He's still asking, who? Next verse. Who? Is he that condemns us? Will Christ Jesus who died, or rather who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, actually pleading and interceding for us? Who? He's still asking. Go down. Next verse. He's still asking. Who shall separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering, affliction, tribulation, 
He's asking because he's talking to glorified. He's talking to justified. He's talking to called. He's talking to predestinated people. He says, who shall separate us from Christ's love? Affliction? Sufferings? Tribulation? Calamity? Distress? Persecution? Hunger? Destitution? Peril? Sword? Uganda? Who? Next verse. He says it is written that for your sake we are put to death all day and we are regarded as counted as sheep that are for slaughter. That means there are men even God has put on line for you to be a success. For you to be happy. Next verse. Yet amidst all these things. All disease, persecution, tumult, trial, temptation, haters, people with each amidst all these things. He says, We are more. Then that means you enter disease a conqueror. Are you hearing me? You come out of it a conqueror. You you enter situation when you know how you're coming out. Are you hearing me? It is beautiful when you know Bakatalaya. That is why Paul says, brethren, we count it all but joy when trials and diverse temptations befall us. For we know. I'm not entering it to die in there. Hallelujah. I'm entering it and I'm going to come out. If you believe, shout hallelujah. You're not in that situation to stay there. Ah. I swear you'll come out. Ah. The Bible says, we are more than conquerors and gain, we gain, that is standard, we gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. We gain a surpassing victory. We gain it. Next verse. He says, for, now, this is the man after understanding it. He now starts telling you his persuasion. He says, for I am persuaded beyond doubt. In brackets he says, I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending and threatening. neither death, nor life. No, not even an angel, nor principality. No things impending and threatening. There are things that are threatening. Oh, we shall do this to you. You will see. You see. I wish I know how to jeer. Uh, somebody help me. Do you know people who are scaring you? You're watching me. You're going, you give me two days. You're going to see what is going to happen. We are working on something. Tomorrow you're going to be down. You watch and see. Give us two days. Speak all you want. I will wake up in the morning. I'll be healthy. I'll be normal. I'll be wise. I'll be powerful. Way higher than where you left me. Why? Because greater is he which is in me. Than he that is in the world, and he has persuaded me of my victory. You speak all you want. Uh uh-uh. uh. Let them speak all they want.
I remember that time where a doctor threatened me and told me, if you walk out of this room, you're going to fall dead. Because we've checked your body, it's, it's, you're, you're going to fall dead. I looked at her, I told her, you don't know Rebecca Grace. I don't know whether she's still alive. What happened to falling dead? I have the life, which is of God. I have the life, which is of God. Next verse. No powers. Uh-huh. No things to come. Neither height, no depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able. That means it has not been given the ability to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We can go home. Romans 8 is over. <laughs> he says, nay, in all these things. He says, uh-uh, uh-uh. Don't be deceived by what I'm going through. Don't be deceived by what you see on my body. Don't be, let, my, let not my looks confuse you. Don't be deceived by my bank account or the car I'm driving. Or even perhaps maybe the, the shoe I'm wearing. Uh uh-uh. uh. In all these days, nay, in all these things. In all. That's why the man had the ability to say, uh uh-uh. uh. Nothing I'm going through shakes the testimony in my spirit. Brethren, we shall make it. We have made it. Saints, you will finish well. This situation you're in, it too shall pass. Your husband will come back home. Your child will be restored. Your ministry will be rebuilt. Your life will find course. Something will come through for you. A deal will open for you. Your helpers will come on their way. Strangers shall come to serve you. Gentiles shall come to your light. Kings shall come to your rising. And answer shall surely come. I preach this message to persuade you. Not to encourage you. I didn't come to encourage. I came to persuade you. It says that you look at a situation and laugh through it. Are you hearing me? You look at what men are saying and the circumstances that are surrounding your life and you are confident. Let me tell you. Sleep well. Have peace. The balm of Gilead is soothing your spirit and holding you all the way to the end. Things are going to work. Things will work out. They will work out. It will happen the way you want it. He says your expectations shall not be cut short. He says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to make you prosper, not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and hope. That expected end. Yes, I know. It looks like it has delayed. But it's only by me that I can restore the years that are eaten by caterpillars, canker worms, and eater. I can do it for you. I can bring all of those years you lost, put them ahead of you, and still make it better. Tell somebody the worst has already happened. And the best is yet to come. Tell somebody the worst in my life has already happened. And the best is yet to come. If you believe it, I want you to raise your hands and speak in tongues for 60 seconds. Come on, say something. If you don't have tongues, you can speak in English. Speak in English. But something happens. Asian words long preserved for our in this world. 
separated bone and marrow in fact I see certain people receive light power of the Holy Ghost take it take it I see that things are going to change in your life I see that your, your light is shining brighter your star cannot be ignored the influence on your life it cannot be sidestepped the grace working in your life it cannot be ignored I see that your body is responding. Disease is not your portion. Viruses are dying. Bacteria are dying. In the mighty name of Jesus. Power of the ghost. Fibroids are disappearing. Blind eyes are seeing. Deaf ears are hearing. HIV is healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Cancer is healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Relationships are restored. Marriages are getting restored. Businesses are getting restored. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ministries are being restored. There is somebody here. You had given up on God. Because of how far you had gone. You had given up on God. Because of how far you have messed up. I have good news for you. You were still foreordained. You were still called. You were still justified. And you are still glorified. God's mind over your life has not changed. He uses the things that are foolish to shame the wise. Some people here are entering a grace that people need to see to believe. I don't have the words for it, but I have the anointing for it. 
Come on, receive it wherever you are. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. God separate you. Maduri costa hando stika krikor la la kiri no musta la drasti. Sando hu prasi prosi ne kiste kuhu takatestreba. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, has not entered the hearts of man, and it is yours. I want you to give the Lord a mighty hand of praise like you believe it. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Venero, make manifest.